In today's video, how frequently should you train your abs? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video is going to be about how frequently we should train our ab muscles. Before we discuss how frequently we should train our ab muscles, I want to remind everyone this Sunday I will be in San Diego doing a free seminar with Brett Contreras and I'm going to post up the flyer here. I forgot to do it yesterday, but I'm going to post it up here. 4 to 7 p.m. with me and the glute guy. We're going to talk about contest prep strategies. So come check us out. Free Q&A, free seminars, and uh, San Diego is an awesome place to be. We accept cookies and donuts and smiles and handshakes. All right, guys, so let's talk about the frequency at which we should be training abdominal muscles. Now, I find that most people that ask me this question ask it because they want to know how to make their abdominal muscles look the best, and we're gonna to get to that. But we're gonna start with training frequency based on the specifics of what you're doing. Now, if you're playing a sport, which most people don't really associate with abs, but if you're playing a sport, you need to be on a sport-specific training platform. If you are doing things like uh, baseball, golf, vertical jumping for say basketball, volleyball, any other sport out there, those type of core training programs are more geared towards explosive movement patterns and they need to be a little bit more specific to that. If you want to train your ab muscles to look the best they can look and you just want to look good walking down the beach, well, I typically suggest two to three times per week, max. Well, why? Well, because as it's often discussed, training the abdominal muscles does not allow them to be seen. That's right. To see abdominal muscles, you need to be low body fat. For men, it's gonna be usually sub 12, 10% body fat or below. For women, it's gonna be sub 20, 18% body fat, depending on the person, depending on how you carry your body fat. Some people carry more body fat in their lower bodies, their lower back, their cores might stay leaner year round, but that's not the discussion right now. The discussion is how often should you train your abs? And I wanna talk a little bit about how to train them. So in my opinion, you should train your abs twice a week. Why only twice a week? Well, if you are undertaking a training program while you're resistance training in the gym, you're gonna be training four to five, maybe even six days a week. And while you're doing that, you're going to be using your core to stabilize quite a bit. If you're doing big compound movements like the squat, like the deadlift, like the standing overhead press, you're using the core to stabilize everything you do. As you, as you, as you brace, that's actually strengthening your core. So what I usually suggest for my athletes to do is do some planks before you work out. If you can hold a plank for over a minute, then you should be good to go with your stabilization. So stabilizers are the internal muscles of the core. They're the ones that aren't really visible. They're not really sexy, but they're there and they really help us with stabilizing. They are the, they are the bridge between our upper and lower bodies. And anyone who has had any back issues knows how important it is to have a strong core. The core being between our hips and our chest, all the way around, okay guys? So let's talk about the ab muscles, the rectus abdominis and the external obliques. Those are the big muscles that really show up. I'll probably use a thumbnail here that shows off those muscles. Those are the ones that everyone wants to see. <clears throat> I train those very, very basically. I don't go doing hundreds and hundreds of sets of abs or crunches. I keep it very basic. I train them for speed and power. I've found that if you train them for power and speed, that they develop nicely. These are my three favorite movements, and I do them twice a week, and I try to either progressively do more reps over time or add some resistance. And once I reach my goals, then I just maintain. I don't try to hit a bunch of PRs with my abs. I try to get them to a good place and maintain them. I'm not trying to develop the thickest, biggest abs I can. I just want fully developed abs. So I'll give you my three top exercises and if you find this valuable or you want to know more information about my exercises, I can shoot some video for you. I've never done an ab training video. Number one for me, and again, this is just my opinion, would be decline sit-ups. So you're sitting on a decline, and when you go up, you reach up and touch the ceiling. Now, you don't actually touch the ceiling, but that's the motion you want to portray. Why do I love that? Well, when you're in a decline position, you really have to engage the entire 
musculature of the abdominals. I really feel it in my obliques. My second favorite ab exercise would be the hanging leg raise. I like to sit in the Roman chair with my arms forward and I raise my legs up. My last exercise that I use for core training would simply be a machine that allows me to do a crunching movement. Now, I don't like to do crunches free form because I don't feel like there's tension constantly on there. I like to find a machine that allows me to keep the tension on my core throughout the movement. I do this twice a week, only twice a week. You don't need to train your abs seven days a week to see them. You need to develop them, let them rest, let them recover. You're also gonna be putting yourself in a position where you could possibly get injured if you train your core too much, too much because it's gonna get overtrained, overworked, and it's going to be weak when you try to perform your compound movements. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. And again, if you want more detail on core training, let me know, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.